when you see a new film, you can probably assume that the score is going to do certain things. You can expect it to reflect in some way the emotional contours of the story and of a particular scene. And in most cases, you can expect it to almost exactly mirror the action. You failed! When a character runs, we hear an acceleration of the tempo. We hear percussion hits and brass swells to mimic the cues in an action scene. And we hear the music slow and diminish into nothing when the narrative slows. This is why Joe Hisaishi's approach to writing music for Hayao Miyazaki's films is so unique. Instead of the Mickey Mousing approach to film scoring, as it's called in Hollywood films, when you watch a Studio Ghibli film, what you get is music that often doesn't change with the action that has an internal rhythm that is unwavering and that deviates from the emotional arc of a scene. You don't get music in your daily life, do you? Even in a movie, it's unnatural to have music. I always feel it's unnatural, but I want to make it not unnatural, to construct reality in another sense. This approach to film scoring by Hisaishi is born out of the artistic and theatrical culture of Japan. In traditional Japanese theatre, gebekan, or the dramatic musical accompaniment, involves the use of recurring pieces of music that serve as a commentary on the narrative, characters and events, instead of mimicking the action. As a natural extension of this idea, Japanese film composers write the music for the film long before the final cut is complete, creating what's called an image album. A collection of pieces inspired by ideas, drawings and key words given to the composer by the director. This way, not only does it enable a composer to create a genuine artistic response to the story, it also allows the music to feed back into the film itself, inspiring narrative, emotional and artistic decisions taken by the director. The result of all of this is a feeling that instead of the music just accompanying the film, the music is serving as a reflection on the psychological and emotional states of the characters. Take Spirited Away. The music in the film is built around a single theme, Chihiro or Sen's theme. Although it's the central idea in the score, it is only heard four times in the film, appearing twice at key moments in the middle act, once at the very beginning and a final time at the end, framing the story. What's remarkable about its third rendition, when Chihiro decides to save Haku by embarking upon a journey that she won't return from, is that the music almost completely contradicts the narrative. To demonstrate this, I'm going to play the relevant scene twice. First, with a rescored version with music taken from different sequences in the film and manipulated by me to fit the action and to recreate the Mickey Mousing style of composing. Then I'll play the scene again with the original score. Let's see what you think. Baba is furious. Hmm? The guy with all the gold turned out to be a monster called No Face. And he says that you let him into the bathhouse. I did let him in. Are you serious? Yeah, I thought he was a customer. What? He's a monster. He's already swallowed three people. Round it, here it is. Hey, we're busy, Boiler Man. You can I guess my parents will have to wait. Sen, I've looked everywhere for you. Lynn! There's blood everywhere. What's going on here? Who 
Who are those guys? I picked up some new friends. See? Everyone's looking for you. Yubaba is furious. Huh? The guy with all the gold turned out to be a monster called No Face. And he says that you let him into the bathhouse. I did let him in. <gasps> are you serious? Yeah, I thought he was a customer. What? He's a monster. He's already swallowed three people. Round it. Here it is, Sen. Hey, I hope you'll agree that Hisaishi and Miyazaki's version is far better. Although it might go against what we expect or what we've been taught to expect, his approach gives a fundamentally more nuanced take on Chihiro's emotional state. She is learning to change, to shed her egocentric worldview and to give something of herself in order to save the ones she loves, whether that's Haku or her parents. The music reflects her inner state an inner state of the film, a state that changes subtly over time, that exists beyond the frantic world that we see in front of our eyes. What's extraordinary about Hisaishi's music, which is also the thing that brings Miyazaki's films to life, is not just its ability to resist cliché, but perhaps more importantly, its ability to stay true to a singular artistic vision, to stay true to the thing that began it all. Imagination. Thank you so much for watching this quick episode of Listening In. This is now my second contribution to the Director Project, where multiple film YouTubers come together to create videos about a new director each month. You should definitely take a look at the other videos in the playlist this month, linked below. And if you'd like to be considered for inclusion in the playlist, tweet your video to at cultpopture. I've also now set up a Patreon account, so if you like what I'm doing on YouTube, then please do consider supporting my channel using the link on screen so I can keep creating videos. I've got loads planned. See you next time. <laughs>